First off, YouTube, I want to start by saying, hope all is well with all. Don't I look happy on this picture? Yeah, this is when I first purchased my bomber bass boat. Until I found out that the transom was severely rotten. Oh, man. So, it had to be replaced either for $3,000 by someone else or a little with 200 bucks by me in a little time. I think I'll take the second option. <laughs> but anyway, I started by cutting out the outer part of the transom because this particular boat, I couldn't access it from the inside. Um, just, I just couldn't do it. So outside was the viable option and that's the option I went with. As you guys can see, I removed the outer skin of the transom um, using the oscillating tool. Those tools are great. If you don't have one and you're doing this kind of work, you really need to get one. So I removed it, transom. I had to um, get all the wood and resin out of here. It was gut-wrenching getting that stuff out with the binding agent that they used to bind the wood together when the boat was originally made. Um, a lot of sanding, pulling, crowbarring, and chiseling, and using the oscillating tool to get a lot of the wood out, but I did. Then I had to get some plywood. Um, I found the best plywood I could find. Um, I made me a template, made that out of cardboard. I used that to cut the wood um, to fit the transom. I took the wood, I coated that with um, epoxy to waterproof it, and that thing came out really, really good. Then I had to come back and sand everything down so I could give me a good laminating spot so I could tie in the old with the new. As you guys can see here, I sanded it down to the bare glass. Like I said, I coated the plywood up pretty, pretty good with this regular clear epoxy. Then I had to come back, make some thickened epoxy up to take the wood and um, coat the wood to get those two pieces of wood to bind together and for the wood to bind to the back of the existing skin that I cleaned off on the inner part of the transom. So I put thick and epoxy all on that stuff to make that, you know, bind real good. It came out real good. That stuff, you can pull that apart if you wanted to. Um, I used silica with the thick and epoxy, I mean, to make the epoxy thicken, excuse me. And as you can see, I, I filled in all the gaps on the sides, the bottom, everywhere. I had a substantial, substantial gap at the bottom of this transom as you guys can see depicted in these these next few pictures so I had to find a way to get this stuff to kind of get a little bit flatter than, than that so I had to come back with a belt sander and had to sand it down real good to give me a smoother contour at the bottom so I can get a, 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 a more flatter surface and it worked it worked it really did work but you have to really be careful with those um, belt sanders because you can kind of sand it or grind it too much and you can kind of start to get into your material and you don't want to do that. So just kind of be conscious of that when you're using the belt sander. As you can see in this picture here, the gap was just, uh, I mean, you could it's like a bike ramp. So <laughs> I took the belt sander, I sanded all that stuff down, I got it really, really, really flush. And um, I really liked it, the outcome after I finished sanding it, it came out really 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 good way better than the way the picture is depicting it right here it was just horrible i just had to sand it down and at first i was going to lay that glass on top of that say i was going to kind of try to build it back up but i said no nah, i'm not going to do that i'm going to do it the right way so i sanded it down and got it flush okay so after i got the wood all in with the thickened epoxy and everything i had to clamp it with the wood I, the wood clamps i put two screws at the bottom to pull the wood to the inner transom they make that really flush so it can get a good bind on it and these wood clamps are so important it's just as, just as important as the binding agent that you're using to bind this wood together because without these you're not going to get a good bind on that wood so invest in some of you doing a job like this don't try to do it the cheap way get you some clamps clamp it down because you're going to need them so uh, after that stuff dried, I had to make me some thick epoxy. I put it on the top, sand it down, put some more on the top, sand it down. To get the top of this transom on top of the plywood to get it to be, you know, flat. It took me a couple of chance, 
about two, three days to get this stuff flat, how I really, really needed it to be flat. So just take your time, it takes time. Then I came back after that dry, sanded it down. I, I put two pieces of woven on first. You know, just to kind of give me a, you know, a good starting point uh, with the laminating part. Um, but the, the, the woven I put on, I had a little bit of um, finishing resin. I used that on that because I know I wasn't going to put a lot of layers of it because I knew it was going to dry real quick. Like I said, I only wanted to do it to get a good start because I know I wasn't going to come back and start back on the transfer for a couple of days. So I wanted to make sure it was, it was secure. So that's what I did. Sand it down more and more and more. As you can see in the picture, this stuff is flat on the top. It was really lumpy when I first started. You know, I smoothed it out as best as I could while I was wet, but I, you know, you're gonna have to sand this stuff. You know, if you want this stuff to be decent and look presentable for when you come back with your top coat, gel coat, whatever you're gonna do. Okay. So then I started laying the mat. I, I, I put a couple of pieces on the front, then I went to the, tied it on the side. Then I put a couple of pieces on the top, then I tied in the sides again, and I put a couple pieces in the front. Cause I didn't want to just put, like start with one big piece. Cause if that delaminates, then everything on top of it is going to come off. So I kind of tied it in piece by piece to make sure I had a good, good tie in on here. I don't exactly know how many pieces of mat and cloth I put on here, but I, I mean a good 11 to 12 pieces. So this stuff is like solid as a rock. Um, I might have overput, but it's better to overput than underput. <laughs> you know, I can always shape this stuff up and get it to how I want it to be. But what I wasn't going to do is have this not done properly and put me, my family, or someone else in danger on the water with this stuff. Then I came back after everything was dry and put some gel coat to cure the resin because I used laminating resin to lay up all the mat and the rest of the, um, the cloth I used. Um, to get a good, good, good um, finish on it, because I wanted to, cure, I wanted to get a really good cure, so that's what I used. I think I, I only the mistake I think I made was I really overdid it with the gel coat. I think I put a little bit too much, so I, it took me a whole day to get this stuff sanded off. Uh, so I, I would, re, I would request anybody if they would use this type of met, method of gel coat. Just, you know, put your thin layer just to cure. You don't really need to put as much as I put on this. Like, this was a big mistake. But, you know, you live and you learn. So I sanded all the stuff down. I got this stuff pretty, pretty clean. Like, the smooth as I can get it. Like I said, it was a lot of sand. I went through a bunch of sandpaper. Uh, two, two or three different sanders because they started getting hot. <laughs> That's how much yoke I put on that stuff. And I, I, I knew when, I, when it dried, I knew. I said, oh, this is just too much. But I had to sand it off. I had to get it off. That was the only way. So that's what I did. As you can see, this stuff is coated in gel coat. But I can tell you one thing. It was solid as a rock. I mean, you couldn't move this stuff if you wanted to. I could promise you that much. Um, so after I, I got this stuff sanded down real good, this is how it came out. Came out pretty good. Wiped it down with acetone. So I got it ready to put the um, the fairing um, product on it that I used to fair it was from Total Boat. It's Total Boat fairing. This stuff is amazing. Easy to mix, easy to use. I mean, anybody can use this stuff. Smartest to the not smartest, I don't care who you are. This stuff is made for everyone to use it. And when I started mixing this stuff up, I mean, you know, it starts off, I think, blue and like a yellowish color, but it turns green when it's activated and it's ready to, ready to use when it's all mixed up together. That's how you know it's ready to go. And like I said, I wiped everything down with acetone. I made sure everything was really, really clean. And I started um, mixing the epoxy up. And as you can see, it's kind of like a rainbow color now because I had just started mixing it. And I had started to see the color start to turn green. I was like, it's it's really actually cool, man, to watch this stuff turn colors and stuff like that. It doesn't sag at all. It stays in place. You don't have trouble with this stuff. Total Boat Compound Fairing. This stuff is amazing, man. And as you can see, this is the color that it turns out once it's done. 
it turns into this greenish puke like color uh, but it lets you know that hey it's ready to go and like I said this stuff doesn't sag it stays where it belongs um, but one note to make about this stuff it is epoxy so if you're using this stuff you don't want to sand down and put gel coat right on top because you're not going to get a good cure out of this so you you know you might want to spread it with some kind of primer or something before you put your gel coat on top of this stuff if um if you're going that route if you're using paint you don't have that to worry about but if you want to put gel coat on top of this stuff you're going to have to put some kind of primer or something on top of it because it's not going to cure properly so and this is the this is how it looks before you sand it down I have another video coming out pretty soon, guys. I got a little footage on that showing me doing more stuff on video. And this, you know, the end, you know, getting towards the end of this project. This project, I'm sorry. Thank you guys for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe. A lot more to come. Um, 1986 Bomber Bass Boat Transom Reconstruction. This is it. Um, and like I said, stay tuned. I got another video coming out on the steps and stuff and i'm gonna have all the products i use it was all from total boat i mean put everything i use it's gonna be in the next video so you guys can see what i use to do this project um anybody could do it don't be scared